If you'd asked me maybe two years ago what I aspired to be, I did not have data engineer in mind. What's good guys? You're here with Amos McCombero. Thanks for tuning in. So today we're in Islington. And you're watching Local Insiders Digital Jobs. We spoke with digital industry professionals in Camden, Hackney, Islington and Tower Hamlets to understand their different pathways to finding digital jobs. Amos McCombero in conversation with Joy Colombo, presented by Lyft and Good Growth Hub. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'm so, so grateful that you're here with us. We're at St Mary's Magdalen Garden. It's a beautiful day today. Yeah, my name is Joy, Joy Calombo, and I'm a data engineer. I recently became a data engineer. I was a teacher up until a few months ago. If you'd asked me maybe two years ago what I aspired to be, I did not have data engineer in mind. For those that don't know, could you explain to them, you know, in layman terms, what, what that means? We live in a world where there's a lot of data. Data is generated on a daily basis second by second. For example, take our mobile phone devices. The conversations that I was having with you guys via WhatsApp and via email, that generates data. We're talking millions and millions and millions and millions of bits of data. It can be quite a junkyard if nothing's done with it, if it's not sorted. So as a data engineer, we take those millions and millions and millions of bits of data and we organize it into a way that has a little bit more structure so that we can actually analyze it to do various things with it. Tell me about some projects that you've worked on, maybe your favorite project. With my company, the most recent project we did was one where we had to grab data from various online sources and produce visualizations for the company so that they could make better informed decisions as to what types of people they should target for recruiting. Quite a simple process in terms of what it is we need to do. Knowing what types of people to target, that's where the fun part came in. Could you run me through maybe a day-to-day -day in the life of a, a data engineer? Uh, my role involved grabbing the data and doing what we call cleaning the data. The data is quite messy in layman's terms. You've got things like duplicates, rows and columns of data that are missing. So we have to find ways to deal with that so that a computer can actually analyze it. Because it's very different when a human analyzes data versus a computer. Computers can do lots of repetitive tasks, provided that you give it the correct information in the correct format, much faster than what humans can do. Additionally, we went on to produce also the visualizations. So I produced graphs and charts so that people could then analyze it. You said you was a teacher before. With teaching, was it a tech subject that you were teaching? And also, what was your transition from teaching? We did work with data on small kind of basis. I used my opportunity with teaching to bring technology into the subject, one for myself, because I wanted to learn, but two, so that the students could also see where can maths apply? I started to incorporate teaching Python after I was learning it myself. So I was learning and teaching. Teaching is one of the best ways to learn, by the way. And for those that don't know, Python is a language, right? Yep. yep. Python is a programming language and it's one that a lot of data engineers use. So I incorporated some Python into the mathematics lessons just so that students could see another angle in which mathematical concepts can be applied. Not just with the numbers, but also with the thinking behind it. After having taught it and realised, wow, there's a, there's a lot happening here um, that I quite like, I wanted to explore more of how I could actually get myself into technology. I continued learning on my own, online, using lots of YouTube videos. Honestly, YouTube is like the new university. It's so good for learning things and it's free, so of course I took advantage. I decided to also get out there and meet other people who are trying to do the same thing. So, there was a coding event, which was pretty cool. And actually, that was a gateway into finding a free bootcamp where I coded for three weeks, three weeks straight, that included weekends, by the way. Uh, very intense, but very, very enjoyable. So yeah, it was like a short course. The company basically had big emphasis. Their model was a teacherless model. The idea was we're presented with the tasks, we're presented with all the information, and we go out and essentially look for things and find out how to do everything. There was a team of us, maybe 20 people, and we were faced with the task. There was no teacher, so we just had to go out there and do it ourselves. But we weren't really on our own because we had each other. People had different backgrounds. There were 
some people who came with some coding. There were people who came with other types of skills, organizational skills, communication, getting people into teams. We also had the internet at our disposal. So we had to complete a series of tasks. That was how we learned a lot about different coding aspects. And it was through doing tasks over and over again, we started to see certain things come up a lot. Those things that came up in coding, they're concepts. Um, you can look them up later. They are conditional statements, variables, functions, and for loops. Those four things came up loads and loads and loads. So we started to use those things to complete a lot of different projects. And that was where, honestly, I gained so much confidence in being able to approach problems. Even if I don't know what the answer is, I know that it's going to involve those four things. Through doing that process, it was stressful. Stressful because a lot of the times, it's one thing when something's difficult, but it's another thing when you don't even know where to look, when you don't even know where to begin, you don't even know what the problem is, picking through the mud, doing lots of debugging. We got through that process, and I think that really did set me up for understanding what it would be like to work as a data engineer day to day. Not just the actual tech stuff, but you know things like resilience, things like um, knowing how to deal with a situation when there isn't quite a straightforward answer. Knowing how to rely on team members. It taught me all of those kinds of things. That was what the, the short course was about and it was a three-week course. It was great and I'm always going to be thankful for that three-week course because like I said, my learning curve was at its steepest at the time through doing it. Upon completing a technical test and passing, and passing the next stage with the interviews, thank you very much. That's how I landed my first role as a uh, data engineer. I feel like it might be that time, you know. Should we show the people the, the next location? Of course, let's do it. I'm excited. When I started learning how to code, a lot of it was done at home by myself, being that kind of lone coder. And then I was following a person on YouTube who mentioned, and by the way, this is golden for everyone wanting to get into tech, is to go out there and meet people, network with people, talk to people. That part's really important. They don't speak about it enough. The tech side of things is important, don't get me wrong, but meeting people and getting to know people, that's where it's really at. Are there any challenges that you faced in your career? Any obstacles? Like, how have you overcome those? Every day is a challenge, really, as a data engineer. But some of the most common challenges that we face are debugging errors. So you try to work on your process of cleaning data, which we mentioned before. But then we find that there are loads of errors that come up, errors that we were never expecting. We get around this with some practices, which we call testing, uh, unit testing. But then we've also just got the fact that we can rely on our teammates, that we can rely on people who are in more senior positions than us as well. It's a good opportunity for me to talk about one of the other things that don't really get spoken much about tech. So the, the stigma is the in tech, it's like this lone coder, the lone genius coder who codes by themselves. But actually, it's not like that at all. It's very collaborative. There's a lot of teamwork going on. There's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of uh, organization uh, involved. And that makes for the work to be much more exciting, but also a much smoother process. And that's essentially how we get around some of the obstacles. We're very, very open with each other. Is there anything about your career that people don't know about? Is there like a fun fact or something that is, is unique that maybe people haven't thought about before? With data engineers, there's a big part of things that come into automation. If uh, people are aware, people have been uh, out there exploring uh, the web, we've got some new uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence and things coming out such as ChatGPT, for those that don't know. It's like a really cool AI that essentially allows you to do a lot of tasks much more quickly. You input some data, you give it information, and it will suggest um, solutions to whatever problem it is you have. So a lot of people now think that um, technology jobs are starting to die out as a result of it. But to be honest, data engineers and other types of people in technology are going to be needed. So that's like the fun fact. We're going to be around even if there are these automation tools that are there because it's that human touch. It's the human opinion that really makes things extremely useful in tech. You know, it's one thing to have lots of data to work with, but it's another thing to have the human touch and the human opinions um, that come into it. And that part's really, really valuable in technology. Last but not least, if I was, I don't know, your younger self and I wanted to be a data, data engineer, you know, what tips would you, would you provide for me to get into the industry? Make sure you are learning by doing. It's very, very useful to watch videos, but it's even more useful to actually 
do things. The reality is you will get stuck a lot of times. There will be times where you don't know what to do, but that's a part of the process as well. And you've got to stay resilient. You've got to stay strong. And the other thing is never ever stop networking, never ever stop meeting people because that's where you find out about things that you just never would have if you'd stayed at home. So there are two things that I would say to take away. Very powerful two things to take away. Joy, it's been such a pleasure going on a walk with you. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much to our partners, Lyft, who do an incredible job at providing knowledge and information for people getting into tech roles. Also our partner, Any Direction and Good Growth Hub for creating that community spirit that has allowed us to, to go on a walk and, and share information about a career that a lot of people probably overlook. But from what I've been hearing, it's an enjoyable one. Yeah, we're here at the, uh, just outside the Emirates Stadium. I'm Amos Macombero. This is Joy. Thank you. Have a great day and uh, see you on the next walk. This video has been presented by Lyft and Good Growth Hub, supported by Mayor of London, in partnership with Camden, Hackney, Islington and Tower Hamlets Borough Councils. Creative direction and visuals by Walk With Amos and Usman Dare. Lyft supports people from underrepresented backgrounds living in Camden, Hackney, Islington and Tower Hamlets to find jobs and training in the tech, creative and science sectors. For more information, visit www.liftfutures.london.